Lane, meanwhile, is the target here for Team Liquid. So when we're talking about, you know, this Lucianami over, Lucianami over, uh, the Ash and the Kalista both off the table. Two of those AD carries that also duo yep. <laughs> as supports here, as we've seen already earlier today as well, uh, being targeted. And it looks like Immortals want to be the ones to go with the Lucian Nami. Now, the reason that you always go with the Nami pick rather than the Lucian pick first, if you're aiming for that duo, and you'll see it a lot in the LCK, they will just yoink away the Lucian, and then you have to play the Draven Nami instead. Kind of like the second best there, you know, pairing there with the with the Nami. And that's what they're flirting with right now. It it's, could be, yeah, the Lucian takeaway, and then the default is uh, to pair the Nami with the Draven instead. This would not be Tactical's first time around with the Draven. Last mm -hmm. week, we saw it with the Pike. Unfortunately, it didn't live up to the hype that we were, you know, really waiting for, but, you know, there's always a second go around, and Tactical has played it to great success in the past. TL, answer as you called it, the Lucian trade, Sejuani being locked in for Pioshik, just some standard stuff for the roster. Yeah, I I'm a huge fan of Sejuani right now, too. In, in a world where junglers, Perma farming is not the way to go. Nope. Uh, so you're you're a tank frontline champion for your squad. Plus you can create a lot of ganks with melee solo laners. And you talked about Summit at the very beginning here. If you want to go camp top lane, get him on a melee champion with a Sejuani jungle. That will transition really well towards the later stages of the game as well. Uh, since you are going to have that playmaker, that frontline. Sejuani, technically, yes, you can uh, as well flex it to have Summit be the Sejuani player. Uh, I am assuming that it will be in the hands of Pioshik, though. And there's the Draven that we talked about. Cassante also locked in for Mr. Revenge up in the top lane. Now, we aren't towards the second banana phase, so this could be an option to block in your counter right And the perfect melee top laner would be the Gwen right now. Gwen melee works so well with Sejuani and is really good into Cassante. One of the best, if not the best picks into the Cassante. So Summit, how much time have you put on it? Oh, they're not going to lock it in. So I'm assuming Immortals would ban that out as a protection ban for Revenge. Uh, take away the Gwen option there because, man, it just works so well there with the Team Liquid uh, lineup. But they really wanted to get uh, the Sona here to pair with the Lucian in response. Obviously, they know the next steps as well. If we're going to talk about, you know, draft three steps down, the yep. team as well is like, yes, we know <laughs> you're going to grab the Draven when we steal your Lucian. Uh, and they want that extra lane power from the Sona. Does scale super nicely as yeah. well. I think that's the interesting part about the draft, right? TL opened up with Lucian, and as the discussion between Izale and Flowers had early on in the day, Lucian, we've only know, always known him as kind of this champion that excels in the laning phase, but now, especially with how AD carries play him around the world, he is fantastic in the late game if you have the great positioning in the marksman for it. So now they're leaning into it, knowing that Draven is going to be a superior lane bully, but if you get out of the laning phase fine with that Sona behind you, you're a yeah, much scarier marksman. Yeah, I mean, it's always, it's always on the player because um, sh having short range in itself is going to put you in that box That's that you have to play around. And Yawn has been one of the most you know hyped up promotions to the LCS in a long time as well. So we'll see what, what he can actually do here. Um, do want to want to uh, refocus on that top side of the map, though, because they actually have gone for an Akali ban here, leaving, leaving the Gwen all the way through. So with Jax off the table as well uh, from the first rounds of bans, really does kind of rise in priority here. Hit moment of truth from Immortals. Do they want to close it off? Bum, 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 bum. Five, four, oh, okay. Well. They go with the Fiora, the skill matchup there. All right, Summit, what is it going to be? You would definitely assume top lane lock here, save your mid lane counter uh, for Harry. It's his birthday. Yeah, birthday present, that's the least counter you can pick, do. please. <laughs> <laughs> Give Harry all the tools, at least just this once. One time, one time. Man. On his birthday? Well, I mean, if you're going to blind pick something, I feel like Rise is uh, pretty All right, you better have... Uh, what I'm saying is Summit better have something really tricky here <laughs> you know, if they're going to save it for for fifth pick for him. Guys, you can't seeing see the... this, but Kobe was just shaking his head furiously. He's like, scumbag. They've seen the Cassante for so long, and they, they just want their hands on this Rise. Even with the Rise nerfs, was a pretty significant nerf uh, to the scaling, the AP conversion uh, to mana. Uh, for Rise hit on the B patch as well. So it's a little bit nerfed here, but Harry's got the confidence. And if you're showing Rise, you're showing, I'm going to roam to both side lanes. Yep. You've got Lucian on bottom side. Draven lanes always insanely volatile. Draven Lucian going to swing very heavily by what jungler, what mid laner can get down there. So Harry is going to have a lot to do this game. 
And Immortal's here for a blaze. All of your pick now into the rise oh. is the Cassidy. It got all the way through, and he's going to look to scale. Team Liquid, I think, are actually going to be okay with that. Mm -hmm. Every game so far, they have put themselves on a timer. They want the roaming power from mid lane with the rise into the Cassidy rather uh, than have to worry about Cassidy level 16. Everybody knows that's going to be on the clock. Both of them will build Seraph's Rod of Ages. <laughs> But uh, the Cassidy will be a very scary later on. It's all about what can this Rise do? Roaming to the Renekton lane, roaming <laughs> to the Lucian Sona lane. I feel like we've definitely seen some memes about R5 Renekton. Like, this is what we saved the great <laughs> counter pick for, the well, big crocodile. You, I mean, you can definitely see the you know bullet points here for Team Liquid. They're like, early game is king. So that's why all this talk about Gwen, you know, we're scaling monster, multiple items gonna be you know massive threat. Uh, I guess they not early gave enough for him. <laughs> Go Renekton with the Sejuani. You can stun lock from 100% to zero. Sejuani stun stacks up so quickly yeah. uh, with the Renekton Ws counting as multiple swings. And we'll see it. Team Liquid, they're sticking to their guns. We had the question coming in, are they going to have a completely different strategy? No, pretty similar. <laughs> I had still the Lucian. The Yon double KO. <laughs> They both knock each other out. Both Nexuses explode. But we're on the rift for game four of week two, day one of the LCS between Team Liquid and Immortals. And for those that are just joining in, hello, it's Rafa and Kobe. We're going to have a good time here, folks. Yes, we are. All right, so early game plans. Looks like it's going to be difficult for Immortals to try and get any deep wards, uh, try and track PO6 early path. Sejuani is quite capable of doing three camp level three ganks. So you do have to be a little bit worried there. Wukong definitely wants to farm a little bit more than Sejuani to mm -hmm. be operational. Sejuani is pretty good on low econ. Yeah. Minions and it's not like you fall. can't skirmish as Wukong, but you definitely feel more comfortable when you hit that level six. That's oh, when yeah. the Cyclone power comes real. Certainly do. Meanwhile, of course, since they do have the Cassidy pick here early on, a Blaze going to try and CS as best he can until he gets it has to go back for his first teleport reset. Summit going to make sure there's no invade from Revenge. Yep. If you're just tuning in now, at the very beginning of uh, the block here, we had a little uh, vlog from Revenge with Pioshik, caught up with him outside here before the game. <laughs> and he's uh, Pioshik said he was going to go, well, pretty hard on Kenvi, and uh, Revenge is like, I'm going to level one invade you. <laughs> so they guard against the level one invade from top laner after seeing what happened earlier today. I uh, like to see it. So I'm just making sure that his jungler has a clean start. We already mm. saw what happened between the C9 CLG game is already. That's an okay. early heal burn from 4JJ. Tactical and Fletchy making the trade happen. But Yon, I think it's just going to flash for fast. No, Yon respecting it, allowing that tactical gets out alive. But they have a summoner advantage, at least when it comes to 80 carry versus Ooh. 80 carry. Really heavy trading. Where are my junglers? I see heavy trading like that. Flash is blown Come already. Come on now. It's a Draven lane. I would have been three camp, level three bottom lane, but that's solo cute, of course. Uh, everybody's on that train right now. Level one still, but they're chugging through their potions very quickly. Uh, very nice for Sona here on the low HPs, getting the heal right back up. No problem. Pioshek over the ward. I don't think Immortals can really do anything about Pioshik's invade. Bot lane is so chunked out from the, the prior scuffle. Kenvi is forced off the red buffs, trying to take these Krugs before Pioshik does anything about it. I think this is just really, really well managed by Team Liquid because Ghana Core JJ get the better of the 2v2. There's nothing that Fleshy and Tactical could do in the heads up. Yeah. You know, they lost Flash on Tactical. This Draven only has Cleanse and has chugged all of his potions uh, thus far, so. Yoshik able to go for a second pass on the yeah. invade. Fleshy coming back to try and threaten. Like at the end of the day, even if Yoshik doesn't get anything stolen, it's the pressure advantage that gives Yon and Core JJ more time to freely farm. And here comes Harry. Those rise roams that we are talking about very, very early. All right, he's going to start it up. Yon still has both summoner spells to play with. Yon takes it up first, takes it with the barrier first blood, goes over to Core JJ. Now Team Liquid have to get out scot free. It's just a flash from Pioshik, but the dive is clean. Really, really good strategy from Team Liquid. We set up in the champion select. Rise Rome bottom. Yon also starting that out under tower. He has no fear because he still has flash as well. Uh, he's able to get the full combo on tactical under tower. Dashes right back out from tower range. Team Liquid finish it off. Yes, the first 
uh, kill bonus gold is going to the support, but it's fine. It's hey, at the bottom hey, lane Sona anyway. Scales too. Yeah, okay. exactly. A little bit of extra gold to skyrocket the Sona. I, I mean, it okay. actually, even though it's kind of uh, jokey with support getting the first blood, it's so nice to have infinite mana on Sona. Mm -hmm. Gorgia J went with the fairy charm plus the tier, so ridiculous amounts of mana here. And this is what we're talking about. Yon does a Yon. very good job. Kites it right back out, has the extra shield there uh, from the barrier as well, tanks the turret shot, uh, and they take advantage of the rise roaming into the Cassidy. Blaze all of using his teleport as well is going to make life a little bit more difficult there, mm -hmm. trying to leech his way up to level six. To and it's a good it's a good early plan from T Liquid. Yawn and Core force the level one super hard, get Sums burned off of tactical, and then they call Fioshik and say, hey, skip all your bottom side camps, come here now. We're gonna go for the pressure. We set up the dive, and this is the snowball that you wanna see. Yeah, and the cool thing about this is that Fioshik can also go top uh, with Summit as we try to set up as well. So this, this Team Liquid, you know, very early game oriented draft, yes, but it's also really hard to deal with because uh, you can't just camp defend one side of the map here. Uh, and Harry again, getting the early push on Rise, doing a good job, shoves the Blaze Olive in, gets another Roam timer. Revenge just finishing off another teleport. So now we're kind of in a a cool state, you know? We, we would call it the... Oh yeah, we're, we're cool right now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, <laughs> we're no, chilling? No fighting, yeah. It's chilling right now. Uh, TL do have the push on the bot side, so Kyosha can look for this early dragon. Harry also has the cryo for himself as well. Yeah, this should be clean. Nice assassination on the blast cone from Pioshik. <laughs> he goes over, blows the blast cone, and comes back. Uh, nice drawing. Dude. Able to uh, finish this one off, no problem, as Jan is able to keep up the pressure solo. And Core JJ can come right over. Dragon stacking, of course, really, really uh, imperative when you have an early game comp like this. Yeah. Don't want to let any of these neutral objectives go over. So Dragon number one will be picked up from Team Liquid. They can then uh, have plenty of time to turn their sights towards the Rift Herald, towards the eight minutes. Uh, and Pioshik here going to just supplement Harry as he wails on a Blaze Olive under town. Yeah, great chunking. Allows Pioshik to cleanly move over to the top side, get themselves ready. Because now you have to, the next step, Rift Herald at eight minutes. This is the time where you want to shift vision control over to that top side of the river. You already see Ken v trying to contest some of that with that control board. Yeah, trying to, uh, get a, some modicum of safety for himself. Meanwhile, Ooh. Tactical, his flash wasn't quite up, so very dangerous as he gets extremely low again. And with the refillable potion, yeah, you can fill it back up when you go back and try and save money that way, but it doesn't heal for very much. Are they gonna go for the 2v2 time? They still know the flash oh, timer's on their side. Yawn and Core, y'all flashing forward. That's how you do it, baby. This is the fearsome duo that was hyped up. Yawn and Harry, these promotions from Team Liquid Academy. One of the most, if not the most, impressive Academy team, maybe of all time, with the two carries getting promoted up here and Yawn having a long history working with Core JJ throughout his Academy mm -hmm. career, uh, Core JJ, really, really trying to mold him into this aggressive player uh, that he likes to play with. And now it's showing in the tower dives. Yes, week one, 02, rough start for them, but mm. looking a lot more clean here as they were able to keep track of Wukong. You mentioned as he cleared the ward on topside river, that's a go button for bottom lane. They see Wukong clearing on topside, great. Dive him again. Barrier is back up for another tower dive from Yan. Immortal starting to feel the pressure, so Kenvi might look topside here, but good ward in the river should at least give Summon enough time if he sees danger to flash away safely. They're gonna look for it now. Third Q, all out from Revenge, gets him behind Summit. He pops the Dominant, the Cyclone knocks him up. Summit, I don't know if he's getting out of this one. It's the flash follow-up from Kenvi, and Immortals are on the board. Summit getting ganked again. 100% of his time in the LCS, I feel like, always, <laughs> always getting ganked to the Wukong level six. It comes, it's inevitable. They're able to get the kill nicely done from Immortals. And they want to try and time that and turn that into some top lane control around this Rift Herald spawn. But looks like they're going for the double recalls up there. Not overreaching as the possibility for the first move from bottom lane from Core JJ and Yan is still too scary. Even after killing Summit, taking down the top laner. So early, death timer's not very long and with constant pressure from Lucian Sona on bottom lane, they'd be able to make it up there in time yeah. if he started out. So Pioshik says, fine, you kill my top laner, but I will be able to kill the Rift Herald. 
and that is worth a lot as far as snowballing these early game comps. I did like the small hover from Yon and Core JJ in that tri bush. They just waited there in case they could make tactical and fleshy believe we have to rotate over for this Rift Herald, and then boom, you still have that item advantage over them. You could have easily gone to cheese. Yeah, it's just the threat. This constant threat here. They shove you under tower. They can early move. Hiding in the fog of war makes uh, Immortals not even think twice about it. And Fioshik keeping up very nicely. I do, of course, you know, admit very easy to play jungle when you have a lot of early aggressive, you know, lanes. He's keeping up on uh, his checklist here, though. Yes, they got sir. the early roam bottom, the ganks to get priority for bottom lane, turn it into the dragon, grab the Rift Herald afterwards as well. Now he's level six you can continue to force the pace of the game with that ultimate. Yeah, just constantly keeping tabs on where Kenvi is. The fact that Pioshek has scattered him out three times at critical moments where Kenvi could have been on the bot side where Yon and Core JJ were pushing in, it has given the freedom for both of these guys to act aggressively and just really exert their will onto the tactical flush. Okay, now for the immortal side, we're looking at the clock, baby. Level nine for a Blaze Olive. <laughs> He's still counting. It is going to be a while. Uh, and there are a couple of difficult blocks in the road towards that level 16. Namely, when that Rift Herald gets used uh, and side lane turrets start to go down yep. and cast it in, the cast it in that's, never mind. Uh-oh. The side lanes are just too painful. What a snipe here. Team Liquid catch him again. Can't even get any vision for themselves to defend. But anyways, the, the, the first roadblock they're gonna have to deal with is once these towers start to go down and the split pushing begins, you know, how do you deal with Renekton, Rise, split pushing, your Lucian Sona, this immovable block of pressure? Uh, it's, it's really gonna be difficult scrounging together enough to experience even and, and buying enough time to get there. You can just feel this giant grasp of just pressure closing in on Immortals. They haven't been able to take any outer towers yet. It's very still early on in the game. Bye bye mid. That, Rift Herald gonna crash in mid lane and could be the first of many to fall in just the next few minutes. Yep, they take it down to one turret plate. Heavily damaged and will be an easy inflection point. Dragons come up though, so don't want to over invest. Just push out bottom, push out mid, start up this dragon, dare Immortals to come to you. And with a level 10 Kassadin, I don't think that's going to happen anytime soon. Yeah, you still got a few more levels to wait on the clock before a Blaze All gets to really play the game. And the pro is he's gonna have to 1v9 once he gets there too. It's not like, you know, Tactical is a level six Draven with 60 CS. Okay, looking for another one here. Summit finds himself overextended, but you might as well just try to give one kill over instead of a kill and assist money, but Kenby is already here. <laughs> Finally pops the Cyclone, and you know what? Summit may go down, but TL have the <laughs> Overwhelming amount of pressure on the bottom side of the map. Maybe it's the trade that they are yeah. just willing to take. It's it's actually going to get comical. I think we're going to have to have like a split long, you know, ganks on summit tracker or something. We're going to definitely have to gamify this. Oh, nice flash for them from Fleshy. Yoshik, ulti will not connect, but still, it's the pressure once again, Kobe. Like tactical and Fleshy just don't get to play the game. Yeah, really, really good use of the draft here for Team Liquid. Also to the, the early trade. If we're gonna go all the way back in time to the origins here, you know, uh, Yon and Core JJ on that first, the level one, you know, full trade here. Yeah, bullying a Draven off the lane like that, making him chug all of his health potions. If you can't keep your spinning axes up by having, you know, access to the minion wave, yeah. then you can't trade anymore. Mm -hmm. You're not gonna have that big damage boost and uh, really nicely thought out here by the TL squad and executed on for the early game. So 3.1 thousand gold and two dragons at 13 minutes. I think that definitely uh, hits the mark that they're looking for. Yes, ideally, you know, Summit's able to play weak side a little bit more cautiously, but um, is definitely uh, an investment of resources as well with, you know, flash from Kenzie uh, in the first gank plus the ultimate, then second gank coming around as well. I think Team Liquid are okay if Immortals are trying to spend all resources up there, because I uh, don't think Cassante is going to be able to 1v9 them. I mean, we've seen Cassante do some pretty stupid things in the past before, but with us recent B-Pack... Well, how stupid can he get? <laughs> Doesn't look like he's going to die here, but at least Can't he Can't 1v9 quite yet. 
of Harry's in. Okay, level 11 for a Blaze, rank two ultimate. He's got the level lead on Harry. Wait, a Blaze all of this is his birthday, man. He's you got... can't kill him. You can't kill him. That's illegal. No, 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 oh. no. You have to respect the birthday rules. All right, Flash burned out of Harry. He gets out a lot. Nice Flash, nice Flash. If that Cassidy starts getting some kills, then that belief, that hope ignites in the hearts of the immortals. And that is their road back in. A Blaze, if he can start to get yep. going. He's going to be the key for the late game. But it's all going to be about if Immortals can stall it up long enough. And for TL, they've burned down the mid lane tower officially. They're getting pressure ready to sink in towards the top side of the map as well. That mm -hmm. Rift Herald's coming up in the next minute. Yeah. I think ideally here, so the difficult play, of course, is to play from the Immortal side. Ideally, they're able to get enough wards down that they can maneuver Kenvi into a spot where he can gank with a Blaze Olive. If you have Flash plus Wukong ultimate and you're able to get this Cassidy, who also has Flash, yep. the kill onto Yawn. That is a big gold bounty that puts a big stop to this snowball that Team Liquid have created. That is that is the ideal play for them if yeah. there's if there's any possibility of them getting a trailing playoff. And look at that. On the minimap right now, Wukong actually trailing Cassidy. They're hoping for it, but um, is not going to be towards the Lucian. And it's going to be second Rift Herald here, started up and presumably taken by Team Liquid. Core JJ hovering Harry here so he doesn't get dove on the tower. And he's out of vision too. I, I'm, I think Kenvi finally spotted him once he approached the tri bush, but up until then, it was there to make sure that Harry doesn't get dove. Yeah, I mean, I, I like the forethought from, from Core JJ, from Team Liquid. They know they don't have to invest all resources into taking top Rift Herald. They're expecting Immortals to try and make the cross map play and they protect against it. Revenge still has Flash to play with, so he should be fine. Nice W use, gets out of the way, stunned up, but he's not going down. Nope, too tanky, uh, even for Sejuani Renekton at this stage, but they're not really looking for a kill. They're looking to push the pace, take down the tower. Second outer tower now taken 14 Liquid and Pioshik does have Rift Herald number two if they want to really turbocharge their push on the bottom side. Team Liquid doing everything pretty much right so far. I mean, you, you once again, you are against this timer, the level 16 <laughs> Monka W Cassidy. Three Fox. stacks in the Rod of Age. That's right. I mean, he's stacking on up. And right now, a Blaze Olive is going to be the person that everyone on the Immortal side looks to to be their hope and savior if they can stall long enough. Team Liquid, though, just the way that the pressure is mounting up, I feel like you can't just look for soft dives. There's like, oh, okay, well, Core JJ's here. You're going to have to invest a little bit more, take a flip and take a chance. 5,000 gold okay, down, man. Rift Herald, second one casted. This is all three outer towers gone at 17 minutes. Yes, sir. And they can definitely get the second charge off as well. Four members of Team Liquid hovering down here. So push it in, get your second Rift Herald charge, then retreat towards Dragon. Do Pasco, do Collect. Dragon Soul Point. Meanwhile, topside gank there. Uh, three members trying to punish Summit again. The Team Liquid punching bag. Yeah. As soon as Flushy shows, it means that Immortals need to make this dive work. They have to get something down. Revenge just goes for the turret kill so they don't have to deal with turret shot. Summit is doing everything he can. Flashing forward to see if he can take out the fish, spear up some sushi, but it's not on the menu tonight. One thing remains true. Immortals will kill Summit again. <laughs> they take his tower. They take his life. Is it going to be enough uh, extra gold for them to be able to stall out this game, though? Because it's such a quick pace set here by Team Liquid. See about the transition over, though. They're actually being pretty slow with picking up the third dragon. I will say it's pretty admirable from someone willing to sack his KDA and his stats for the season just to make sure that TL make all this pressure on the bottom side work out for them. I mean, <laughs> copium. I see. I, uh, yes, yes, they are fast, fast me so fast. There you go, buddy. Uh, I do. <laughs> I do love this copium. <laughs> nice flavor you have here as well. Yeah, strawberry. Honestly. Uh, Team Liquid, though, they knew what they were doing when they picked him up. And uh, honestly, it's a price well paid. Dragon Soul, five minutes away. And with so much space, too, uh, I, I know a lot of people have always talked trash on the Cloud Dragon. <laughs> but the Cloud Soul was not only buffed, uh, but it gains a lot of value when you have a team like this that wants to play the whole map. So you have the entire map you're running around, trying to split push, trying to get uh, you know, your, your ride realm warp to get these 
uh, minion wave sure. rotations done. And if you have the extra move speed to do it, uh, and then you also have the extra all-ins here um, with your ultimates popping uh, for the extra chase down, then, you know, like, Yan can make these big chase down plays with Lucian. Yeah. Essence Reaver is done for him. Uh, a lot was said about the power of the culling and the usage here yeah. in setting up in the previous game. See if Yan can have similar impact. He certainly did in the lane phase. I mean, just look what they did to this Draven. And Look what they did to him. Yeah, and it, it, it's a breath of fresh air for all of the Academy fans that were waiting to see this guy make a, a awesome debut. In the first week, tough choice. Your opponent was Prince in your very first game. And then the second one, yes, uh, sh probably should have been a TL win, but TSM, great surprise and just great gameplay on their end to actually close that game out and put TL in a situation where they're starting out 0-2. But I think their scrims and whatever they've done in review have been really productive to just have you know, a very, very different look than what we saw in week one. All right. Three stacks on the Rod of Ages and level 13 Cassidin. You get your bonus level when you when you max out your Rod. So getting that towards the end, still hope for Immortals. Because that Cassidin with a Wukong ultimate will certainly be able to kill that Lucian. And if, he's, if he falls, that big sack of gold goes into a Blaze Olive's yeah. hands, you know. They actually can turn it around. Winnable, as they say. <laughs> Two minutes, 50 seconds, though. A Blaze Olive already using his power to face check for the team, because if he finds a Glacial Prison, he can always, he can always rift block away. Should be able to not face any difficulty getting up in the face of Team Liquid. And it's so important for them to really contest this vision because if they just let TL run them over in terms of fog of war control, I mean, then there's no way you're getting in position to take out Yon. All right, let's see about it. We've got Summit Split Push on bottom side. Unleash Teleport is ready. So like Cassante going to match him now. See how far he can get it in. Rest of Team Liquid, when you've got your Split Pusher with the wave advantage, easily rotate over to Baron, clear all the vision, make your opponent sweat. See what extra resources you oh. can get out of them. Okay, dead center on Ken V, but he uses the clone to get away. Flash, Cyclone, Harry popping the Realm Warp. Do they continue the chase? Yes, they do for his birthday, baby. He's going to flash out, still gets hit by the Tidal Wave, and now here comes the all-out from Revenge. He finds Yanni, looks for Assassination 10. That's huge for Immortals, and now can they turn the heat on? A Blaze Olive, Rift walking into the team. It's still four members to four, but Immortals, can they have the firepower? Huge oh. for Revenge, and a Blaze <laughs> The Immortal Solo Laners shout all the doubters down, and Team Liquid are floundered. Harry finds one back, but that's a huge turnaround for the Immortal Squad. It certainly is. They got the big shutdown. It didn't go into the Cassidy, but Revenge, a happy recipient of that one. Nice job by him. He flanks Yawn, ults him across the longest wall over, is able to finish him off before Yawn could even flash. Beautiful assassination there from Revenge on the Cassante. Let's take another look at how it started, though. The pick from Pioshik nicely started. They are not juked at all. They immediately chase on Kenvi. Realm Warp here, full commitment. They know they can finish. And it's just the Hail Mary from Immortals. The teleport in, Revenge right next to Yawn. Yawn doesn't, he doesn't get the move until the very end there. So no flash from him upon arrival of Revenge and instantly gets kicked through the wall, yep. taken out of the game. And then the chase down here, a Blaze Olive tries to start it out. They get the slow. Revenge gets a really nice two-person Q number three to lock them both back in. Harry, though, is not giving this one up easily. He put in a lot of work here. And is able to fight him off, get one back for Team Liquid. And it's just in time for the Dragon arrival. 20 seconds on the clock. Recall from Harry does have Unleashed Teleport to join for the Dragon Soul fight. And while Team Liquid still have a decent 5,000 gold lead over Immortals, that is huge in terms of just stalling out the game and, make, and making sure the TL can't just run you over. Pioshek has this flank on the backside. But who does he look for? You, I imagine that a Blaze Olive and Revenge have to be at the top of your list for people you want to hit with that Glacial Prison Summon. And Pioshek now making the left side flank 
forcing them away from the dragon. You can get important cooldowns, even if you don't win the fight or you don't get any kills off of it, you can always just go back to the dragon and take the prize that you want. Blade Prison down onto Revenge. He's forced out. He doesn't go down. A Blaze off Rift Herald's away. Summit turns on to Kenvi. The Monkey King goes down. Team Liquid this time. They're fighting on their own terms, and they force away the important carries, and TL will take their claim. There's so much to take right now for Team Liquid. They're going to go grab the Baron. Are they going to try and make sure there's nobody sneaking around towards the dragon? It looks like they're confident enough. Oh yeah, S Summit's kind of debating if they want to keep any eyes on it, but teleport dudes here for Immortals. They're coming to actually contest. It's a Blaze Olive. All right, we've seen steals from many different types of champions, no Pioshik, but it's okay. Pioshik's trauma will not come back to haunt him again. There's no Varus in this game. You have no fear, buddy. And now Team Liquid gets to move on over to the dragon. They look for a pick, maybe. Oh, Rome, we're up over there a nice. lot quicker. Burn this thing down. Poor JJ on that side of the Realm Warp doesn't go inside the pit, but it doesn't matter. They also get the Cloud Soul. There was a little spark there of hope for Immortals when Revenge is able to get the assassination on Yon in the previous team fight. But Team Liquid, they are not deterred. Good focus from them yep. to just re-engage, set up another pick for themselves. So much damage dealt to Revenge in the beginning of that fight. They had the health lead on the front line, so they're able to just run them all back. And unironically, Summit did a good job, you, you know, distracting and Let's baiting go. so many cooldowns. He uses a slice and dice plus the flash. He got the Nami ult plus drew them all over to the side, mm -hmm. gets his Gore Drinker heal off. So he leaves, he lives there in the critical team fight, drawing everything out so that Harry and Yawn uh, can just burn through the enemy front line and Team Liquid make it over the edge. That's the last big hurdle here for them. Now with Baron plus the Dragon Soul, much easier for them to return to yeah. the beach. Summon also pushing on the bottom side of the map, getting this minion wave prepped in synchronization with TL's mid wave push. They find Revenge, he's stunned up. He's tanky, all right, but is he tanky enough? I don't think so. Team Liquid find the kill onto their superstar tank, but Harry is sacrificed as a resort, getting cut off by Immortals, but that's okay. They still got firepower in their young rookie prospect and Yon being able to gun down. Tactical's gone. Fleshy is speared up once again. Pioshik just distracting Kem. He doesn't even matter if he wins the 1v1. He just needs to buy time because Team Liquid have their sights on the base. Team Liquid are inside Pioshik and Kenvi playing jungle tag over here in the river while the rest of the team assaults the level 16 Cassidy. All right, he's level 16 on Blaze Off. Do you have the firepower? Do you have the 1v9 potential? Oh no, he goes golden. Summon takes up the first turret shot. A blaze off Rift walks out. Nexus is exposed. You don't even have to kill the cast and just go for the end, but they add up to the KDA. Team Liquid take their first win of the spring split. Team Liquid stick to their guns. They draft super strong side lanes, roam lane in the middle. Immortals right, draft right into it too. With the cast and pick there, that's yep. just gonna mean rise. Full lane bio, full roaming prowess there for Harry. Happy birthday. He makes the critical level four roam to bottom lane with Pioshik after the secondary jungle invade. And as soon as they successfully make that tower dive off of the hard work that Yannick or JJ had yeah. put in, that early game was determined. This is what Team Liquid wanted to show back in week one, but the synchronization, the comms, maybe it was the nerves from both Harry and Yon being the newest players to the LCS, but getting used to it, it all it takes sometimes is week one to get back into review. I mean, you look at some of these young guys